Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another standard game video. Today we're taking a look at a Jeskai colored tokens deck featuring a few new cards from the Brothers War. One of those is Third Path Iconoclast, 2 mana 2-1, two saying whenever we cast a non-creature spell, create a 1-1 one -one colorless soldier artifact creature token. And that pairs quite nicely alongside Tokesha's Welcome, 3 mana enchantment, saying whenever one or more creatures with mana value 3 or less enter the battlefield under our control, draw a card, and this ability only triggers once each turn. So if we have a Welcome in play and Iconoclast, we can maybe even trigger Welcome during the opponent's turn by casting any instant to enable Iconoclast to make a soldier, and then draw a card. So that's one of the main synergies we're building around. Then we also get to play with some other awesome enchantments that generate tokens, when announcement of course making those human tokens maybe drawing cards in the process eventually transforming into wedding festivity to pump the team and then a fable of the mirror breaker starts out with a shaman token that can make more treasures and eventually the reflection of kiki jiki can also be a way to enable tokesha's welcome during the opponent's turn by copying one of our creatures so there's a ton of synergy there too then we need some cheap removal as well to go with the iconoclast to make sure we survive and can enable iconoclast during the opponent's turn so that's where four copies of voltage Surge comes in handy, can deal 2 damage or 4 damage at instant speed if we sacrifice an artifact, which also pairs quite nicely with the 1-1 soldier tokens that the Iconoclast generates. Then we have 2 copies of a Destroy Evil to take out a creature with toughness 4 or greater or destroy an enchantment. Then we've got some counter spells as well, 3 copies of Make Disappear, which also pairs nicely with all the tokens since we can easily sacrifice one to enable casualty, so the opponent has to pay 4 mana as opposed to just 2 to resolve their spell. Then 2 copies of a Braid to deal 3 damage damage or destroy an artifact, so we have answers to both artifacts and enchantments in our main deck. And then a 4 Fires of Victory, which deals damage equal to the number of cards in our hand to a creature or planeswalker, and we can also kick it for 2 in a blue, in which case we get to draw a card, which will also increase its damage output, so this can even answer a Shieldred if we have enough cards in hand. Also important that maybe killing a Haughty Djinn or Tolarian Terror from the mono blue deck, and that's also where Voltage Surge can be a nice 1 mana answer to a 4 Toughness Haughty Djinn. And then I'm also packing one and the festivities to deal one damage to each opponent and each creature and planeswalker they control can be nice as a one-off that the opponent doesn't necessarily play around and can also be great against a blue-white soldiers deck which can often go wide with lots of small creatures and this can be a nice one-sided board wipe especially if we can kill the opponent's lords with our other removal spells. And then at 3 mana we've got all our enchantments, and at 4 mana a planeswalker in the form of a wandering emperor, which is also great alongside Tokesha's welcome, since we can maybe flash an emperor in the opponent's turn, make a samurai token and still draw a card, and of course also great at answering larger creatures with the minus 2. And then we have two copies of Teferi, Temporal Pilgrim, which is another great finisher, and also pairs quite nicely with Tokesha's Welcome, since this will often draw us a ton of extra cards, and that will grow the spirit token we can generate with a minus two. And whenever we draw a card, we can also put an extra loyalty counter on Teferi, so that makes it easier to keep generating more spirit tokens that will pick up more plus one counters whenever we draw, and Vigilance means they can play offense and defense quite nicely. And then looking at our mana base, sadly don't have access to one of the tri-lands, since there's no Jeskai colored one in standard right now, but we have a ton of dual lands, so we've got our Innistrad duels that come into play untapped later in the game, and then a few pain lands as well, to make sure we can still play our two drops on curve a decent amount of the time. And then we've got the channel lands, which offer a little bit more interaction. Crucible can also be nice to potentially enable Tokesha's welcome in the opponent's turn by channeling it and making two one ones. So overall, pretty controlling deck, looking to play long grindy games where we can take over with a card advantage from Tokesha's welcome. And uh, yeah, we'll see if we succeed in doing that. So let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is missing an untapped land, so we can't play Iconoclast on turn 2 at the moment. So, it's not great. But we could, of course, draw an untapped land in the meantime. I've got two draw steps to find one. Alright, let's try it. At least double Iconoclast can provide tons of blockers if we're behind. Opponent on a green deck, green white enchantments. Okay, destroy evil can take out an enchantment. 
and a wedding announcement, so might want to take that out before opponent gets more value. Although it's not the most mana efficient play for us. Could play my own wedding announcement, although it's going to take a while to get going. Or I could play Tokesha's Welcome, although our opponent could remove it. So we find ourselves at an interesting spot. I think Tokesha's Welcome might still be my best play. And then hope to string together some land drops with Iconoclast, which can then also potentially draw cards in the opponent's turn with Welcome if we destroy evil at instant speed. A lot haunting we can also take out. Alright, so need a land here. Found one. So upkeep stop. And then do we take out haunting? I think so, since that card is gonna take over otherwise. Draw a card. And then now we have a few blockers, can maybe trade if needed. Catilda's carry too. Opponent attacks. And uh, probably just trade here, keep our Iconoclast. How scary is Weaver going forward? Maybe if they find a borrowed time to exile several of my permanents at once. Whereas if I trade, we also shrink down Catilda. Yeah, I'll take the trade. We should have the card advantage in the long game, so we just need to survive. And Ottawara can also potentially bounce Catilda here. Although maybe better off going Welcome into Iconoclast, or I guess Iconoclast into Welcome, although then we draw one fewer card. Don't know how much the 1-1 one -one on the ground matters. Could keep up Mig Disappear as well as another option. Just play Iconoclast, keep up my Counterspell, take a hit from Catilda, and then we should still be able to take over, but if I need to pay casualty costs then I don't want to sacrifice Iconoclast either. If our opponent had another Hallowed Haunting, we probably would have seen it, so not sure what they have in hand. Maybe another Catilda. I think I'm just going to try and draw a few cards here. So welcome into Iconoclast. And then we can interact next turn with Soaring City, maybe find some other cheap removal in the meantime. Naturalists into another Weaver. One card left, and a wedding announcement. So that will make a token end of turn, we take six. And a make disappear not looking great on this board. So I can play wedding announcements. If I Soaring City I can keep up my counter spell, but then we don't trigger welcome, that seems bad. Fable. I guess we play Fable here, or do we keep up our counter spell and then hope our opponent draws something we can counter to enable Welcome once again? Whereas Fable can try and find more answers and gives us an extra block or two. Alright, we'll pass. Another wedding announcement, okay. So we're not quite that to Catilda. And we've got a bounce spell in hand at least. Opponent makes two tokens, can copy the announcement trigger with Weaver as well. So tokens versus tokens. And time to discard, at least one make disappear can go and a land. And Ganjo, not the best answer to Catilda. So we'll be able to trigger welcome end of turn with announcement at least. And then for now, just pass with Soaring City available. Another make disappear and a fable. Have to discard to hand size even. But we could see an all out attack, in which case it's not like I can bounce festivity. Opponent plays it safe. 
Just sends a couple tokens. Oh, still four tokens. So, Soaring City bounce Katilda. And then line up some blocks, I guess. And two trumps. Keep our Iconoclast, and then we can hope to counter Katilda. Just to trigger welcome. Could sacrifice Iconoclasts with casualty. Although, then I'm not getting the extra tokens. So I think we just counter to get the tokens. And hope to draw some removal and destroy evil is one of them. So our opponent can still copy the announcement trigger with Weaver. And their team is now enormous. So it's going to be an uphill battle, but we're drawing more cards than the opponent now. Okay. So how do we do this? Destroy Evil needs to go after Katilda. Gotta wait until the opponent's turn, so they cannot use the enchantments. So there's three mana left, I guess, for Fable. Could try and Voltage Surge a token now, so I don't have to discard to hand size as much. Since I don't think we're taking out Harmony or Naturalist. Okay, we'll pass. Another naturalist resolves. And then we still need a, a long term solution to the enchantment part of it. Although we can try and counter with Make Disappear. Circle probably goes after Iconoclast here. That happens. And our opponent's going to copy it to also go after Reflection. There's the enchantment, which we can now counter. Okay. So let's discard a couple lanes. And then Iconoclast, step one. Another Iconoclast. Seems good here. And then maybe wedding announcements. Keep a voltage surge. And a braid. And then next turn maybe finally play it to ferry. Could have maybe tried a sneaky attack to finish off a naturalist with an abraid. Could have also been worth it to try and double spell on the Weaver to finish that off. Opponent's got another one, so they're empty handed now. And we've got all the card advantage, so feeling good about things. At two life we cannot feel super comfortable, but uh, 24 cards remaining. Just need to make sure we close out the game in time. But the fairy is going to help with some large tokens. And our opponent's attacking since they feel like they can't win the late game necessarily. So let's say we abrade a naturalist, make a couple more tokens and draw. Of 
Fires of Victory is what we were looking for all along here as a better removal spell. So a double block, quadruple block, and double block seems fine. And then I guess there's still a Weaver attacking. Don't want to miss that one. So let's uh, reevaluate for a second. Triple block Weaver. And then I guess I'll just uh, trump with my Shaman. Keep the Iconoclast around. That looks okay. I guess I should have moved Shaman and a 2 2 token. So I would have been left with an extra creature. So there was a slight uh, miss sequence. Don't think it's going to make a huge difference now. Just going to make sure we end the game before we draw from an empty library. So Teferi, step one. Make a token. You know, I've always got and then keep up Wandering Emperor and Fires is probably the safest move. Can turn the corner pretty quickly here once we get rid of the naturalist. And I'll discard a land. And yeah, opponent has seen enough, so very close to the brink of death, but to Keisha's welcome plus iconoclast, a pretty sweet combo. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and hand seems promising. Double iconoclast. Can play one on turn two. Great with our to Keisha's welcome. Bit of interaction too. So we'll wait and see if we want to play turn to Iconoclast or maybe keep up a counterspell. I think playing an Iconoclast is fine. If our opponent taps out to kill it, we resolve Welcome. And then we can go Shields up afterwards. Maybe play Iconoclast and a spell in the same turn to get immediate value. Alright. Iconoclast down, at least her opponent can't counter with a Make Disappear, and then now a Fable is also tempting. Although Welcome into Fable draws a card, so is that worth it? Let's say her opponent plays their own Fable next turn, don't have double red, but I could maybe draw into a red source by playing Iconoclast and drawing off Welcome. So interesting spot. I think we Welcome first. Opponent might have their own Fable, and then ideally draw a red source. And then I could even Voltage Surge in the opponent's upkeep to trigger Iconoclast and trigger Welcome again. Bang Buster instead. And a Wedding Announcement's great too. So, Make Disappear probably more important on turn 5 where they could cast an Invoke Despair, even though Shieldred would be annoying too. I guess Fable before announcements, even though that does get punished by Shieldreds as we get damaged by the second chapter if we decide to draw. Potem might have another cut down. Okay. And the fires could be a clean answer to Shieldred at least. There are Shieldreds. And our opponent can crew Bankbuster, hit us for four. Okay, so cannot cast the fires to kill Shieldred now, so I'll take my draw step. But then in response to the second chapter, I can cast fires and then deal five, and then we can still draw. And then we would like to find an extra land so we can keep a MIG disappear here. So what do I discard? Maybe a Voltage Surge. Do I also discard Iconoclast? Or is it a Wedding Announcement? Tough choice. I think I want to keep both Counterspells, although Make Despair is weak in the face of Bankbuster, admittedly, so maybe one Counterspell can go. And we did find a land at least, so... Yeah, I'll keep up Make Despair so we don't get blown out by a potential Invoke Despair. And then next turn we get our Reflection, Trigger's Welcome, draw card. Corpse Appraiser's fine. I 
I guess we could have always sacrificed our fable instead of the welcome to an invoke despair, but would rather not have our opponent resolve it. We are down to 11. Opponent could crew the bankbuster, but decides not to. And now we get to draw. So there's less incentive to play another creature since welcome only triggers once each turn. But uh, getting a wedding announcement going could be fun. Alternatively, I can pass, can also channel Crucible in the opponent's turn to draw a card. But uh, wedding announcements, keep up, make disappear, sounds fine. And then next turn maybe go for Iconoclast. Opponent draws. And then now we have Make Disappear with Casualty, since we can easily sacrifice our token. There's another Corpse Appraiser. Do we want to counter it? There's creatures in the opponent's graveyard. I think we hang on to Make Disappear to play alongside Iconoclast to maybe trigger in the opponent's turn. And then I can maybe use Reflection in the opponent's turn as well to enable Welcome again. So it's all about card advantage in these mid-range matchups. Appraiser hits us for three, we'll take it. Could also block finish off with Voltage Surge, although that could also be better with Iconoclast in play. Get to untap, another Welcome. So... Don't quite have the mana to play Iconoclast into Welcome. Could just play Welcome since we get an announcement trigger end of turn, and then still keep up our instance and reflection. Kind of like that idea. So this looks good. So for now, pass a turn. Make a 1 1 draw two cards. And our opponent's going to attempt to kill Reflection. I don't think I counter this, but I will activate it to copy a token. And that can jump into the opponent's turn since we're already in the end step. But now I don't get to trigger a double welcome in the opponent's turn, sadly. Liliana, not the most effective against this board, so that's probably fine. This is my home, and I don't appreciate it when people touch my things. Can jump with the one one that's about to go away anyways. Opponent's gonna make us sacrifice it instead. So they're on the beat town plan here. Off you go. And we're happy to jump if needed. Also kind of liking the idea of playing Iconoclast and then Voltage Surge, finish off Liliana and the opponent's upkeep. And let's keep our life total high. Even though we will eventually grow the team with announcements. Okay, so if I play Iconoclast, I could go Wedding Announcements, trigger Iconoclast, keep a Meg disappear, although I wouldn't be able to Voltage Surge. So maybe I just play Iconoclast, I get to draw two, see what's next, and then the plan might be Voltage Surge the Liliana and still keep up our Counterspell. Now the question is, if they kill Iconoclast end of turn, do I fight over it? And uh, yeah, opponent has another cutdown after drawing with Bankbuster. Not what we wanted to see. I think it's okay to fight over this, and then I'll set the upkeep stop for Liliana.
and that will trigger welcome. And then we still have another voltage surge with kicker potentially to deal four damage. And then now we can probably survive a uh, invoke despair. Plus we could always draw into another counter spell. So now the main concern is a shieldred, since we can only deal four damage to it. And welcome draws us a lot of cards. So finding a fires of victory would be great. Opponent tries to kill Iconoclast. I guess we can finish off a Corpse Appraiser, make an extra token on the way out. Opponent Cruise Bankbuster, which we're happy to double or triple block. And the Harvester is fine. Two cards left for the opponent, and they can still draw with Bankbuster. Let's start with Fable. Since we have plenty of lands, we wouldn't mind discarding. See what we draw off Welcome. And then can hang on to Iganjo, play Wedding Announcements. And then next turn, try and find some answers with Fable. No attacks. So we've got the late game covered. Question is, can our opponent do some damage in this next turn with a Shieldred or an Invoke Despair, potentially? Corpse Appraiser is fine. So next turn, discard two lanes, try and find the fires, try and find one of our planeswalkers, maybe. And opponent did not select Shieldred, so they might have another one in hand. Although they've seen the fires of victory, so they may not want to play into that. Invoke Despair. That works. So what do we get rid of? Creature. And then which enchantments? Probably the fresh wedding announcement, since I need to keep the extra power and toughness on the board. And we should be able to find more ways to enable double welcome next turn with our second chapter. So the fresh announcement can go. Fall to five. But we should have some good blocks for this turn at least. No attacks, and there's our fires of victory. So that's a good one. Discard a couple lanes. And no way of enabling Tokasia's welcome here is problematic. So I might need to kick Fires of Victory and hope to find something. And I'll take out maybe Harvester since that threatens to combine with a reflection of Kiki Jiki later. Drawn a braid that deals with Bankbuster, still not what we were hoping for. Could attack with a Shaman token to make a treasure. Probably better off staying back. So we don't get to trigger Welcome. Next turn, Fable transforms and then can enable it. Opponent discards their Mig disappear. Not great this late in the game. And there's their own fable that resolves. Probably gonna hang on to a braid until we find another iconoclast to draw more cards with. And another harvester. Our opponent could also be gearing up for a blade coil serpent. So a braid can also answer that one. Another land, so we better draw some action here. A four transformed fable. A braid. And a land, so not really. Okay, guess we'll pass. I 
Blood Token goes digging, another Fable discarded. And our opponent gets to loot. Make this appear. I think that's the third or fourth one now. Third one. Cycle Xander's Lounge. So our opponent's digging, but they don't seem to have a lot of action in hand. Although they discarded Fables, so they can't have too many lands either. Although they might just be digging for their specific cards like Blade Coil or Invoke Despair. Opponent animates Bankbusters. That one we can kill with Iganjo, I think. And our opponent attacks. So I guess the Shaman may be giving them the fifth mana to cast and Invoke Despair. So if they do... I guess I'm willing to give up the Wedding Festivity, so I'm blocking in such a way that I don't expect to have the plus one plus one bonus second main. But let's start by killing Bankbuster. That works. And then go to blocks. So let's say we trade here, and then I could block with Reflection like so, double block Corpse Appraiser and trade for Shaman. Or I can not put Reflection in harm's way, and then block a little differently, something like this, or... Yeah, it's gonna be tricky to keep the Reflection and another creature in play to leverage Tokasha's Welcome, which is the end goal here. So I don't think I should count on it. So let's just trade there, double block here, and let damage happen. And there's a shield rid instead, so that one we can double a braid at least. Which is probably the plan. Do I need to do it in my upkeep to play around make disappear? Uh, let's see. Opponent can cast it with casualty. So, yeah, I think I'm better off doing it in my upkeep. So I can pay for another make disappear, should that be their last card. Doesn't seem like it. Okay, so at the very least we can use Reflection to draw two more cards. And there's Iconoclast. And a land. Play Iconoclast. And then now Blade Coil Serpent could be quite devastating, so hopefully that's not their last card. I guess this can attack since it's going to go away end of turn. And hope they don't have a blade coil left over. It's gonna be a fable instead, that's fine. One card in hand. And a fires of victory is excellent. So how do we want to sequence maybe fires now on the reflection? With kicker. Trigger Iconoclast, and then I can use Reflection in the opponent's turn to trigger Welcome again. Third Welcome, and another Fires, and there's a Teferi, so now we can actually close out the game pretty quickly. So how about we play Welcome, keep up Fires and Reflection, and next turn go for Teferi, or do I Teferi now? Although then I wouldn't be able to copy with Reflection and Fires, but maybe that's okay. And we'll make a token. And then now we're safe from a blade coil, I think. And this uh, spirit token is going to grow incredibly quickly. With all these welcomes. Nobody knows the past better than me. Can't feel too comfortable at 5 life, but we're definitely the ones in the driver's seat. Got an answer to shield it. Soaring City and Fable discarded, points down to 20 cards, so we're pretty even. Bangbuster gets to draw, so now we're both 19 cards left. And then end of turn I could either copy the Spirit or Iconoclast, although that's a little worse in the face of removal. So maybe I just copy a Soldier token. 
So we're less sad if it dies. Opponent cuts down the Iconoclast. And we get to grow the spirit here with double welcome triggers. Wandering Emperor can also gain life if needed. So I think we've got this one now. Just gotta make sure we don't draw too many cards. Untap, Voltage Surge is great too. So can we win the game here? Might be able to, since we've got the two removal spells. Can copy our spirit token, maybe make another one first. And then respond to the welcome triggers by copying the spirit token that we just made. Could have played another welcome. But this should be enough. So now the hasty spirit also picks up extra counters. And we should be able to clear a path. And attack with all. Alright, sweet. Very grindy game against Grixis, but Jeskai Tokens prevails. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got a Keeper. Turn 2, Make Disappear. Hopefully turn 3, Fable. And then wait on Iconoclast until we can enable it right away. Naturalist, so opponent gets a discount. Yeah, I think we keep up our counter spell and hope to hit our land drop for next turn. Fable, we're happy to counter. So Naya enchantments. There's our land, so we get to play our own Fable now. Fable before announcement, since could maybe generate extra mana with it, which is extremely important early on, especially. Katilda, just a 2-2 at the moment, so we can still attack into it with our Shaman. And then with the treasure, we could also flash in Wandering Emperor, although land is great. So what do I get rid of? Maybe one Iconoclast can go... And then maybe we would rather find more removal instead of a wedding announcement here, which is not too close to drawing us more cards. So let's discard Iconoclast announcements, and then we can maybe attack. Of course, Emperor is an answer to Katilda if it attacks, so that's one way to answer it. And then maybe if they block... I'll use Emperor for a plus one counter, but more likely to just accept the trade. And then instead of going Iconoclast, keep a Mig disappear. Probably keep up Wandering Emperor instead. Expecting Katilda to attack. But we can counter if needed for opponent plays like a Hallowed Haunting. That might be worth taking out. So they may be able to resolve it now. But we still have Destroy Evil in the deck to answer it. Land 5. And a Rite of Harmony, so our opponent's gonna draw some cards. Katilda number 2. Fair enough. So we get our Reflection of Kiki Jiki, and then... We could play Teferi, or we could play Iconoclast. If we play Teferi, we still keep a Mig Disappear, so that's nice. And then, question is Samurai or plus one counter. Samurai could be helpful with paying the uh, casualty cost. Or we could just plus Wandering Emperor to kind of split up the opponent's attacks on our Planeswalkers, so one is more likely to survive at least. 
That's also reasonable. So Shaman attacks, Teferi draws, and keep up, make disappear. Gejo's welcome will be great too. Not opposed to sacrificing my shaman to casualty. Both at Emperor. Nope, just got Tilda. And Naturalist at the ferry. So I could trade for Naturalists. Although we might be able to leverage welcome enough where it's better to keep reflection. Get to untap, and then Welcome also synergizes quite well with Teferi. So I can play Iconoclast, play Welcome, which doesn't trigger the Welcome itself yet, and then make a token with Teferi, which will trigger Welcome. If that makes sense. The fairy gets some more loyalty, and then reflection copying anything in the opponent's turn can add even more loyalty. But now we found a voltage surge as well, so we should have most things covered. Voltage surge in the opponent's upkeep, maybe killing Katilda. So we uh, enable welcome again. Although we could wait and see what our opponent does next. We managed to exile the first Katilda so they couldn't disturb. So I want to wait for them to maybe attack so they don't get a chance to disturb. Katilda goes for Teferi. Boulder Surge. Don't know if we need to sacrifice for the extra damage just in case. Can our opponent play any enchantments at instant speed? They might have a Wandering Emperor. So I'll play it safe. Sacrifice a 1-1 one -one over a treasure. Even though we could also maybe counter whatever they play. And then end of turn, I'm probably going to copy the spirit token with reflection. So that can also attack for a bunch. A right of harmony again, that's fine. And then teaching resolves. Okay, so end of turn, make sure to activate Reflection still. A right triggers off both creatures and enchantments, so they got to draw two. And then now, do we want to counter Naturalist? It draws another card. Although I would have to sacrifice a creature. Yeah, that's probably okay. So with Casualty... Counter sacrificing a 1 1 since we get a replacement anyway. And then end of turn, still copy our spirit token. So our opponent's got one card left in hand. And the next turn we can decide if we need to minus with the ferry to enable welcome, or if we take a different approach. Bones at 20, so we're not too far from just killing them here with these spirit tokens. So how about we minus to ferry, and then in response to the trigger from welcome, I'll make another copy with reflection. So we get the maximum amount of plus one counters. Meant to be and our opponent concedes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw and we've got a keeper. Wanna play beach so we don't need to take damage to cast a turn two, make disappear. And then turn three, either welcome or wedding announcements. Opponent on Grixis. 
So hopefully we get to counter a juicy 3-drop here. Put on passes. Okay, so I think I'm okay to tap out for a 3-drop. Opponents might have their own make disappear, but we have a few uh, good 3-drops we want to get out there. So I'll start with an announcement. If this gets countered, maybe play Welcome next to get maximum value out of our second announcement. And there's the make disappear. Now if they get to 4 mana, we might want to keep this up to counter a potential shield root. Opponent's got the Fable, so now we could resolve a Wedding Announcement or Welcome. I think I'll go for Welcome, and then next turn we have the mana for Announcement, keep up, make disappear. Opponent does get to gain extra mana with the Shaman, which does make our counterspell worse, but we don't mind sacrificing a token to Casualty. And then we'll need to find some removal spells to deal with Fable and Shielder discarded, so they might have another one in hand. Opponent passes for now. Okay, let's try announcements with Make Disappear backup. Opponent's got their own Make Disappear with Casualty. I guess that's not resolving then. But we get to keep up our counterspell for now. And then Fires of Victory can maybe deal with the Reflection. And Wandering Emperor can draw extra cards with Welcome. Invoke Despair we're happy to counter would have been an answer to our enchantments. Okay, so I think we just pass the turn as opposed to main facing Emperor, which is an option too. And then I'll still have a counter spell up. Sure. Get to draw right away. I hope you're ready to leave. We must protect the people. And then we can cast this with casualty. If your opponent plays a scary creature that they want to copy with Reflection, we can maybe kill it in response. A Braid is fine. And then we're probably seeing an attack from Reflection. Would have been nice to play it kicked, but we'll protect our Emperor. And then Iconoclast plus Welcome is a great combo too. Okay, can play another Welcome, and then if I draw a land, I can still play Iconoclast, keep up Make Disappear. If not, I'll just keep up Make Disappear, I think. Let your blade do the talking. Destroy Evil could also come in handy, and there's a land. So I'll add Iconoclast to the board. Might have been worth it to just wait until next turn so that we trigger Welcome again, without needing to give up our Wandering Emperor. Siphon Insight's okay. But now with Iconoclast in play, we can maybe counter something, make a token and draw two more cards, so the upside here is potentially higher. Podon tries to cut down. I can make disappear just to draw two cards here. That might be okay. And then make them tap two more mana as well. A wedding announcement is perfect. So we've gone through double make disappear, one left in the deck, but double welcome, providing a ton of card advantage now, and our own voltage surge to finish off Emperor. That's fine. Step one, maybe Fable, and then draw two with welcome, and then announcement if we attack with both creatures, we'll actually draw an extra card as well. And our opponent gives up. Yeah, that's just too much card advantage for a mid-range deck to deal with. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and hand seems fine. Good mix of interaction and then wedding announcement to pull ahead. Keep up our voltage surge, don't expect to channel. Okay, 
opponent on a Bane's deck. And the farmhand that resolves. So we get resolve announcements. Opponent maybe gets to do the same. But now we've got another one. Alright, it's going to be an Urza instead. 2-4. We cannot quite Voltage Surge. So I could tap out for announcement, or I could keep up Make Disappear in case of a Might Stone and Weak Stone next turn. Which is maybe more prudent. But sadly, don't get to flash in an Emperor here. Could always channel Soaring City, but I might need it to play announcement and keep up Make Disappear afterwards. Opponent passes. So yeah, we'll just take our draw step. Tokasia's welcome's nice too. How about we play that and keep up Meg disappear? And then announcement can draw off Tokasia's welcome right away. And we could fight over this with a Meg disappear. And yep, yeah, there it is. Casualty resolves. So now we wouldn't be able to fight back with her own Meg Disappear, since there's two different instances and her opponent can pay for one of ours. So yeah, that happens. Not gonna attack, just make an extra 1-1 one -one grow the team. And try again with Wedding Announcement next turn. Maybe attacking into Urza since we can Voltage Surge. And another companion. That all happens. So yeah, turn the team sideways, another welcome the draw. Maybe that changes things. Although I think we can still attack into Urza. Opponent takes it. And then go for welcome, keep up counterspell, as opposed to announcement which would draw. Since we're probably setting up for a long game, so just want to get as many cards as possible. Farmhand resolves. And then if we could find another white source, we can also flash in an Emperor end of turn to enable welcome. Opponent attacks back. Probably a race we can win. Right, opponent's got their own announcement to draw. Might be worth countering, even though I expect our opponent to have scarier cards in hand. So what if we let it resolve? Opponent draws. Next turn I play my own announcements. Don't necessarily want to attack with a team, since then we don't draw off welcome. So it's kind of a tricky spot, so I might be better off just countering here. And then we have a voltage surge, which hopefully finds an artifact soon to take out Urza. Alright, Igancho also gives us Wandering Emperor now. Although, don't know if we need to exile a tapped Urza necessarily, since our opponent won't be able to meld it yet next turn. And we can turn it into a bit of a race attack, and then announcement will draw. Although if I attack with only one token, I'll be able to make a token and draw, which is the best of both worlds. So maybe that's still the play. Draw Mountain. And there's a Mind Stone and Weak Stone like we feared. Can maybe draw two. It's gonna take out a token instead. So next turn our opponent can meld. Alright, lay down arms. Our opponent on the beatdown plan. Can maybe finish off Urza if it attacks here and we get a chance to block. Opponent reconsiders. Okay, so attack with a team or attack with one token to draw off announcements. 
opponent takes it. So yeah, seems like our opponent's going to be able to meld next turn, unless we draw an answer at instant speed with uh, Tokasia's welcome. Announcements nodded. So Urza melds. That happens. Do as I command. It's gonna draw to end discard. Victory. Well, we can flash in a Wandering Emperor here at least. Draw card. Voltage Surge can also go after Urza. Might have been worth it to flash an Emperor on the off chance we drew some instant speed answer. Although I don't want them to necessarily take out Wandering Emperor either. Automated battalion, advance. Alright, another voltage surge, so that's four points. Really needed something like an iconoclast here. So we have artifacts to sacrifice. Another Wandering Emperor instead. So attack all at Urza, put on chumps, and take it from there, I guess. Okay, so Urza takes two damage. Could also flash an Emperor for a plus one counter. I think I prefer playing announcements to draw and maybe find some more burn spells. Put an end of turn stop as well for that. And uh, let's tap a little bit better. A braid does not target planeswalkers, unfortunately. And end the festivities, I guess, is a way of dealing with some 1-1s one that the opponent makes. So we'll let them untap. Urza makes tokens, that's what we like to see. My army never tires. And a banishing slash for our enchantments. Sure, Sir opponent also gets to make a samurai now, since they control companion. Could voltage search to take it out. Don't think that's necessarily worth it. Another Banishing Slash. Yeah, I'm regretting not killing the Companion sooner now. I guess I can take it out with maybe an Abrade to deny them an extra token. And keep Voltage Surge to maybe finish off Urza. Put on counters with a Make Disappear. Okay, that's fine. Can just voltage surge the samurai and then end the festivities will take care of the one ones. Hope Ursa makes more one ones. Perfect. Send of turn double voltage surge. And then we might be able to attack for lethal here. Thanks to an unexpected end of festivities. And a counter spell just in case. That's satisfying. We've got the edge in this fight. All right, sweet. Our one-off end of festivities coming in big here, and stealing the win from a melded Urza. All right, so we got to see our Jeskai tokens deck in action, and there were a ton of nail biters. Always felt like we were fighting an uphill battle, which is not the best feeling. Probably means we can adjust the deck slightly to improve some matchups, but it was mainly designed to beat up on other mid range decks, which I think we did successfully, even though the games were always close and cards like Invoke Despair, Answering, or Enchantments are always kind of scary. 
And then against the Enchantments deck, we managed to eventually stabilize and take over with Iconoclast and took Asia's Welcome, which is a pretty awesome synergy and one I was quite impressed by. Being able to enable the Welcome both in our turn and the opponent's turn is pretty important to get the most out of it. But uh, we didn't face any hyper-aggressive decks like Soldiers, but in my testing that was a pretty difficult matchup since early aggression, especially backed up by Thalia taxing all our cards, since our deck is filled with non-creature spells, can be pretty difficult to overcome if we don't have a cheap removal spell at the ready and we're not packing a ton of main deck sweepers just one of end the festivities so if we want to improve the soldiers matchup probably need to have more end the festivities maybe seismic wave as another way to deal with a ton of one toughness creatures as well as maybe take out a lord so that's a card i would look at to improve that matchup so this deck may be better suited in a best of three environment where we can kind of tailor our deck to beat what the opponent is trying to do and pack more sweepers and other interaction for aggressive decks where we can maybe cut some of our removal and add more card draw against control. So that's probably where this deck is going to be at its best. For now, in best of one, I think I would add a few more sweepers, maybe some more cheap removal to have a better matchup against soldiers, although our mid-range matchups might suffer if we add too much interaction and cut some of our other card draw effects. So it's a pretty tricky balance to strike, but overall definitely had some fun making tokens and drawing a ton of cards with welcome. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.